It's a beautiful, crisp fall day in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where it's senior day for the red hot number 23 North Carolina Tar Heels, winners of eight straight. They host the Miami Hurricanes, who've responded with two straight victories since the dismissal of their head coach. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. The Tar Heels are in the driver's seat in the ACC Coastal, unbeaten in league play. Duke lost to Pitt today, so North Carolina cannot clinch the division this afternoon. But if they win two of their final three games, they will. Miami, they got bowl eligible last week, bringing some light to an otherwise dark year. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Chapel Hill. Alongside my partner, former Pitt quarterback John Congemi, I'm Clay Matvick. Last night, John, the college basketball season tipped off for the number one Tar Heels. Normally, that would dominate conversation around these parts. <laughs> yes. Not this year. Larry Fedora's football team has this program on the cusp of its first ACC Coastal title. Well, Clay, you're right. Not only the basketball team, but the football team and Larry Fedora has got Tar Heel Nation a buzz, and they, they're really excited about what they're doing on the football field. And they're led by a fifth-year senior quarterback that really has turned his season around and shattered records of last week against the Duke Blue Devils and arguably his best performance in a North Carolina uniform. His season may have turned around, though, in week four when he was benched, and his very pedestrian numbers have gotten aggressive after that. And you can see that with the yards per game, the touchdown to interception ratio, much better. Marquise Williams is an exciting quarterback to watch. He creates explosive plays not only with his right arm, but with his legs. And look for him to do that a lot today against this Miami defense. And believe it or not, Miami is still alive in the ACC Coastal race since the embarrassment to Clemson a couple of weeks ago that preceded the ouster of head coach. Al Golden. They've beaten Duke in miraculous fashion and Virginia. For more on that, let's go down to Mark Morgan. When Larry Scott took over as interim head coach for the Hurricanes, he said the joy of playing was missing from this team. I spoke to Scott just prior to the game, and he told me that he asked his players to remember that feeling they had when they were just six or seven years old, when they first started playing football. He wanted them to tap into that raw energy and that passion, and so far, the Hurricanes have responded. Scott also told me that not only did he implore his players to show emotion, he told his coaching staff to do the same thing because he says it starts with us. He has done a fine job. Thank you, Mark. We're ready to go here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina won the toss. They elected to defer, so Miami will receive the football. Mark Walton and Corn Elder back to return this kick from Nick Weiler, and we're underway. And Miami will start from the 25-yard line. Brad Kaya. Second game back from a concussion. Looked good last week against Virginia. Over 2,100 yards through the air for the sophomore from Los Angeles. Boy, he's an exciting young quarterback that loves to deal from the pocket. He has a great toughness about him, and he's more of a, a rhythm thrower. That means get a little hitch, get in the pocket, find a guy, and let it fly. And he's been doing that for the Hurricanes for the past two seasons. And he wants to have a big game today because he has to be the leader against the defense that has given up some points this season. He wants to chuck it. First play from scrimmage deep downfield into the sunshine. Incomplete. Intended for Stacy Coley, second down. The keys when Miami has a jump. Well, it didn't look it like it on first down, but Miami wants to run it to throw it because the UNC defense has allowed close to 220 yards on the ground each game, so Miami needs to pound it, and then it opens up that passing game. For defense, for North Carolina, you have to be stingy. Doesn't matter in between the 20s, but you can't allow six points. You have to limit yourselves to field goal opportunities today against the Hurricanes. Second and 10, they go to Yearby, the first run of the game. He is the Canes' leading rusher, averaging 80 yards per contest, brought down by Nas Jones, the defensive tackle. He's going to bring up third down and six after the four-yard pickup. And this is where Miami has been better over the last couple of weeks in their two wins. On third down, they've converted at a little bit better clip than their season average, which is right around 37%. Still 10th in the ACC in that category, but you're right. Over the last month, it has improved immensely. Stacy Coley is usually your guy near slot. 
Kaya has time. Pumps. Releases to the near sideline. Coley was the man he was looking for. Well played by Des Lawrence. And Miami will have to punt. Defensive coordinator Gene Chizik for the Tar Heels couldn't have drawn up three better plays. They didn't, Miami didn't attack them on the ground only once, and they went after their arguably one of their better players in Des Lawrence on the corner on third down. Justin Vogel on to punt. Ryan Switzer, a very dangerous return man, is back, but he'll call for the fair catch at the 25. And now we'll get a first look at the North Carolina offense, led by the aforementioned Marquise Williams, the fifth-year senior dual threat, coming off one of the best games for an ACC quarterback this season. 494 passing yards, 524 total yards, both Tar Heel records, and he was so accurate down the football field. He's playing with a lot of confidence, he's making good decisions, and he's a guy that plays with a lot of emotion for four quarters. He's already been emotional here today, his mom and dad down on the field with him for that ceremony for the seniors playing their final game. Slipping, going in motion. Was Switzer, he gets it, he wants to throw it. And he throws it away. Ryan Switzer slipped, coming around the end. Yeah, that kind of fouled up that play from the start, It jump. really did. He was lucky that he was able to regain his balance because you could see Marquise kind of delayed the snap a little bit. And in the, in the extension, the separation wasn't wide enough and a good play by Bush recognizing the double pass. Ryan Switzer, big play in the first play from scrimmage last week. And now he's going to get it here on the end around. Miami's Dion Bush drops him for after the short game. Switzer caught an 89-yard touchdown on a flea flicker last week. They like to use him in a lot of different ways. So third down and six. Opening series for North Carolina. I'm going to get a whistle here. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players in formation. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Mark D'Onofrio's defense had 12 men on the field. Do not want to start the football game that way defensively because North Carolina very good on third down. Converting close to 50%. That's 13th in the country. And you go from a third and six opportunity for Miami to get off the field. And now it's third and short. And you're looking at a power back in Elijah Hood behind a big quarterback. Williams keeps it himself, and he's going to pick up the first down. He's 6'2", 225 pounds, and hard to stop. What are the keys when North Carolina has it? Well, I think their quarterback, their fifth-year senior, has to make great decisions, and he has been making great decisions. He's the catalyst of this offense, so use your legs like you do there on third and short, but protect the football and complete a high percentage of passes. For UM, they have to mix up their looks, use a lot of nickel and dime to confuse the senior quarterback. Elijah Hood on first down. Good run. And he's going to be close to another first down. Again, when you talk to the coaching staff, they just admire his physical play. He's averaging six yards per carry. He got nine on that run. He's downhill. He's physical. And now you see North Carolina using a little bit of tempo in their offense. Actually ten, and they'll move the chains. Play fake. Williams rolling out. Throws, and it's caught. At the 44-yard line by Quinshawn Davis, the big physical receiver for the Heels, who are now in plus territory. The Heels have some big guys on the outside. Davis, one of them, at 6'4", 220 pounds. And look for a double move out of him later in this football game. Working with tempo. They waste very little time. One of the fastest-moving offenses in the country. Second down and one. Hood. Has another first down as he's upended at the 40. Corn Elder makes the tackle, but North Carolina moving well here early. This is how North Carolina continues to put pressure on opposing defenses. First down, explosive plays, and now they get up to the line of scrimmage with that tempo offense. Williams will give it to Hood again. He hurdles a couple of bodies at the line. And another short pickup for him. I really like the way Hood runs the football in between the tackles because he loves to square those shoulders up and get downhill in a hurry. The goal today 
for offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell is to get it to him 20 times. The last few years, it's been running back by committee for North Carolina, and it hasn't worked out well. They have focused on Hood this year, and he has responded. It's been a strength. Second down and six, and Williams runs out of time. He is sandwiched for a sack. First of the game, it's Calvin Hurtaloo, the nose tackle who got there first, second-year starter. And there is a man down for Miami. It's Anthony Moten, who was also in the backfield. Calvin Hurdle, who did a terrific job of getting to the quarterback, Marquise Williams. It was a play action, long developing play, vertical routes down the football field. But when you win up front with those big bodies, Moten and Hurdle, you create havoc in the backfield. They're looking at their sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. We'll step aside and check out him when we come back. Moten got his bell rung, but he got off the field under his own power. Larry Fedora, fourth-year head coach at North Carolina. His highest win total at the school since he won eight in his first season in 2012. His team has a third and 11 here on their opening series. I think the guy you're looking to is in the slot, Ryan Switzer, number three. From the 41-yard line, Williams. Plenty of time to throw, and that one's incomplete. He... Tried to hit Hollins, who was coming back to the football, but this drive is going to stall out. So a couple successful plays for North Carolina to open up on their side on offense, but Miami gets the big sack on second down and then has an answer on third down. Third down has been so good for North Carolina this year, but Joey Mangilli comes out to punt for the first time for the Heels today. Punting has been a trouble spot on special teams for North Carolina. They've used three different kickers this year. Drops it inside the 10. Checks up at the 2. Beautiful punt by Joey Mangilla. As we check in with Mark. So Anthony Moten uh, left the field immediately, came over on the Hurricane sideline and sat down. He was looked at by three or four medical personnel of the staff. The, he then removed his shoulder pads. He's now lying down, and they're massaging his neck and shoulder area. While he was sitting up, before he removed his pads, they had him rotate his neck back and forth. So, again, he's being worked on laying down right now without shoulder pads on the sidelines. Boy, there have been some tough injuries this year for that defense, John. I mean, you think about Darian Owens and Raphael Kirby at linebacker, but they've had some, they've had some issues. Yes, yeah. they have. So now a long field for Brad Kai in the offense of Miami. First down and 10 from their own two. Yearby barely got out of the end zone. Nas Jones nearly dropped him for a safety. He was a guy that was battling injuries. He came back last week against Duke, but a great first step. He splits the two Miami offensive linemen and almost created two points for his defense. Second what an athletic week. play for a big guy. Oh, terrific. Second week back from injury for Jones. And now second down and ten. Yearby again. Nowhere to go. Kaysen Collins, the Sam linebacker. Got there first, so it's third down and long. Thirty-seven percent on third down this year for Miami. As you said, it's been getting better, but now they've got to be very careful here with a defense that has that end zone helping them out. This is where Brad Kaya has to make a good decision in the passing game. You want to be able to create a first down here on third and long, but you have to protect the football. Kaya to Yearby. Gets behind a couple of blocks. He's got the first down out at the 11-yard line. Excellent play for Yearby. Donnie Miles ran him out. And Miami will get some breathing room away from that end zone. Terrific call by offensive coordinator James Coley. They set up the screen perfectly. 
you get those offensive linemen out in front. It looked like Yearby wanted to get out of, knock them out of their, his own way. Terrific job getting to the edge, and now they create that first down and some separation from the goal line. Now Kaya sets in the pocket. He'll throw over the middle. It's Yearby again, and he's got another first down catch. And they said they wanted to get him a ton of touches today. We expect him to be running the ball more as the game wears on. Well, between Yearby and Mark Walton, the backup, they want to get it close to 40 times. They're running with tempo here, too. They get a screen out to Herb Waters, the receiver. Good catch and run. He's close to the 45-yard line, one of the few seniors on this Miami team. That's a gain of 14 yards. And Miami getting some confidence now after that big third down screen pass. A couple of plays down the field. When they go to this double stack, watch them try to attack the football field vertically. Inside handoff to Yearby. He'll pick up about four yards. Jones makes the tackle. This is an offense, John, and we're kind of seeing it here that has been very good at times and then at other times has looked very poor. But James Coley has his team now out at midfield. Consistency is what they're looking for on both sides of the football. And I think when you have a guy like Brad Kaya who can deal the football from the pocket with all of those athletes, Boy, it's exciting times for him in the future for this Miami offense. Coley was Jimbo Fisher's tight ends coach for five years before coming to Miami. Mark Walton will get a touch here. And the Canes get into North Carolina territory for the first time. Walton, a true freshman out of Booker T. Washington High School in Miami. They want to pound both Yearby and Walton. They want to be able to soften up this UNC defense and really do it on the ground because that's where the yards have come against this defense. Eighth play, third down and two. And a first down run for Walton, but there's a penalty flight down on the far end of the field. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty, third down. John, this team has been penalized a lot this year. 83 yards of penalties per game. That's 14th in the ACC. We've seen it on both sides of the football. A third and six went to a third and one, and North Carolina is able to run the quarterback sneak. Now you have a third and two, and you get positive yardage. You're going to move the chains, and it sets you back to third and seven, which makes it more difficult on a team that has struggled throughout the season on third down. North Carolina brings five. Somebody slips through and they get to Kaya. Sacked at the 35-yard line. It was Jeremy Clark who busted through the redshirt freshman from Virginia. And it's fourth down. Clark, Clark comes downhill right from the nose tackle position. He does a great job of coming in and establishing himself in the middle of that defense. Man, that's a big body coming straight downhill at the quarterback. Gene Chizik has done a terrific job with this North Carolina defense this year. They are better in every area, and they nearly blocked that punt. Switzer was run into. Penalty flags all over the place. He called for the fair catch. And there were several canes that ran into him. Kick catch interference. Kicky team. Number 27, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, Switzer's very dangerous. He's got six career punt return touchdowns. Miami knows it, too. He can't get that close, though. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And the Dish two-year TV price lock. No hidden monthly fees like the other guys. Of course, Veterans Appreciation Day here at Keenan Stadium. The American Legion riders escorting the team buses to the stadium. Rams Club members who have served helping to bring out the giant American flag for the national anthem. And this was really neat. Dean Mogi, assistant strength and conditioning coach here at North Carolina, who served in the Army with tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, led the team That's awesome. out on the field. Thanks to all the vets who have and who are protecting us. 
First down and 10 for North Carolina. It's Elijah Hood. And that might be a loss on the play. Artie Burns, good to see him back. He did not play last week. The cornerback for Miami, still grieving the loss of his mom, Deborah, who passed at the age of 44 late last month. He uh, missed last week, and I know he's playing with a heavy heart still today. Yeah, the junior out of Miami Northwestern, just a spectacular talent in the secondary for the Hurricanes. Williams kept it, faked it to Switzer. Miami ready for it, barely gets to the 40-yard line. So now another third down and long here for the Tar Heels. As Kendrick Norton, the big physical true freshman, was in on that stuff. And Miami doing a better job of substituting players in and out on third down to try to create havoc in the backfield for on Marquise Williams. Williams incomplete Try to hit Bug Howard and there's Burns with a beautiful play to break that up he has five picks this year leads the ACC in that category he's a ball hawk great positioning and anticipation by Artie Burns it looked like the receiver Howard just opened the door and he allowed Artie Burns to come underneath and make a play on the football so Mangilli who pinned Miami inside their own five-yard line last time will punt for the second time. Braxton Berrios calls for the fair catch at the 21 with 5.02 to go in the first quarter. We check in in the studio with Brandon. Hey, Clay, in the Big 12, back in 2011, it was Iowa State that spoiled the national championship hopes of Oklahoma State. Cyclones looking to do the same, but Mason Rudolph to Marcel Aitman, 16 yards and a touchdown. It is tied 7-7. Back to Chapel Hill after a short break. What we expected to see here with two very potent offenses. Each team has had the ball twice. Each team has punted twice. Miami's got it again at their own 21. This is Brad Kaya going out to the flat for Yearby. Makes the catch, has room, has a first down and more. Along the sideline and finally run out by Dominique Green. Big gainer for Joe Yearby, the sophomore of the Miami Hurricanes who may be hurt along that Miami sideline. And that would be a huge loss for Miami if Yearby stays down on the Miami sideline. But if you're going to play man coverage, you better get to the quarterback because these Miami Hurricane athletes will make you miss in space. Goes over the table. Mm. Wow. Yearby was a backup last year and has played such an important role in this offense this year. Now Trayon Gray with the carry for Miami. Mark Walton is just now coming back out of the Miami locker room. He went to the locker room for an unknown reason. They get it to Coley. And it looks like they're using the short passing game, John, like the running game. That's another first down for the Kings. It really is, Clay. It's an extension of the running game. When, when Miami spreads you out vertically, sideline uh, sideline to sideline, they will eventually get vertical in their pass offense. Penalty marker down as Gray gets the carry. It's going to be about a three, four-yard pickup if it holds. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. First down. Let's go down to Mark Morgan. Guys, Joe Yearby, you know, uh, took that hard hit near the table at the back of this hurricane sideline. He laid on the ground where he was hit for just a few minutes. He has since gotten up and now with help is now walking in the direction of the locker room. So again, we're really not sure what exactly uh, his situation is. He appears to be limping uh, and favoring a leg a little bit. Yeah, thanks, Mark. And, and you said it before, John, the goal for Miami today, according to James Coley, is to get 40 rushing attempts. Well, Yearby would factor majorly in that game plan. Ball is loose. Who's got it? North Carolina does. Kaysen Collins with the recovery. Usually in a game that's been back and forth in between the 30s, you're looking for a turnover to change the momentum. And this time, a high snap to Brad Kaya changes the momentum for the Tar Heels. Too high and too hot for Kaya to handle from Nick Linder, the center. 
And now Sonny Odagwu, the right tackle, is down on the field for Miami. As injuries have been an issue here early on for the Canes. Penalties have been a problem. And now a turnover with 3.29 to go here in the first quarter. Gives Carolina the football at the 36-yard line of Miami. Now Saturday night football presented by Walmart features the game of the day between number 12 Oklahoma and undefeated and sixth ranked Baylor on ABC at 8 Eastern tonight. The first real test for the Bears. Of course they still have TCU and Oklahoma State. The Big 12 is going to be decided with those crucial matchups the next few weekends tonight at 8 on ABC. First ranked team that Baylor is going to face this season and they lead the country in points and yards per game and it's good that Sonny got himself back to the sidelines and hopefully he'll be ready to go the next offensive set for Miami. Good field position here for Carolina as they start this series. Williams sprinting out, fakes the pitch, and picks up the first down. Boy, he had everybody fooled. Quan Muhammad was left in his tracks. When Williams runs the football, he ignites this offense, and he ignites himself. I, I think that's the way you start on offense for North Carolina. Get him more involved running the football. That was actually Jamal Carter who he fooled and then Muhammad who came back from behind to make the tackle. It's Williams again. Stiff arm stays on his feet to pick up three and now he's pushed down. And there comes the penalty flag. Rayshon Jenkins being a little overzealous there along the sideline and that's going to be a late hit. And the fifth penalty against Miami already. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds on a defense. At the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Well, Miami has assisted in this drive with the late hit, but it wasn't much of one, but it happened in the white on the sidelines. And that's where you just want to lay off. You know the quarterback's kind of going out on his own. Just get away from him. And now North Carolina has the ball first and goal at the 10. They've been good in the red zone, scoring at 89%. 26 red zone touchdowns, first in the ACC. It's Elijah Hood in the backfield, another fake pitch, and Williams takes it in. Marquise Williams with his seventh rushing touchdown of the year, and Carolina's on the board. Clay, we talked about how his legs ignite this offense. Three rushing plays in a row by the fifth-year senior gets six points on the board. He is so big, so talented. Does it with his arm and his feet. We've seen him do a little bit of both already today. And now Weiler comes on for the extra point. Miami turns it over, and North Carolina turns it into points. Terrific job of extending the option play outside. No one with edge support for the Hurricanes. Mohammed's kind of in no man's land. He either has to take the pitch or take the quarterback. He does neither, and Williams splits the defense for 10 yards and six points. Marquise Williams. Almost 3,900 yards of total offense last year. That was really his coming out. Point. Was. He's been he's been pretty good throughout his career, but last year was exceptional. This year, his decision making has been really good, and that's what has taken him to the next level in many people's opinion. We talked about it in the open after the benching in Week Four. Something ignited Williams. I don't know if it was that, or he just needed to focus a little bit more on his craft. But after that game, his percentage went up. His production went up in terms of touchdowns to interceptions, but his overall decision-making has been the biggest difference in this offense. We saw the 84 touchdowns responsible for that. Tax another touchdown onto an already North Carolina school record. And again, playing in his final home game, the fifth-year senior, Marquise Williams. Weiler's kick into the end zone, and Mark Walton's going to bring it out. Makes a man miss at the 9, but not at the 12. Big hit on North Carolina coverage. That was Cole Holcomb. Let's take a look back with our Jared the Galleria of Jewelry drive recap. Well, it was the turnover by the defense, a high snap. 
Collins gets on the fumble, and then it was the fifth-year senior, Marquise Williams, doing it on the ground with his legs on the option play. And look, he turned a tackle for loss into a positive play, and then here from 10 yards out on first and goal, he uses that speed and strength to get inside that front pylon for six points. Kyle to throw on first down, taking a shot deep downfield. Had a man in Herb Waters with a couple of steps on the coverage, but missed it. Let's go to the studio for an update. Play, we're on upset alert in the Big 12. Iowa State coming right back on Oklahoma State. This is Joel Lanning to Alan Lazard. Makes a move inside and fights his way in for the touchdown. It's 14-7. Iowa State just added another one. Back to you. Oklahoma State, one of those undefeated teams in the Big 12. Again, not getting any love from the committee. Held outside of that top four. Boy, could Iowa that State do it to him again? Ball it happened in 2011, He's of course. He's got him going. Miami turned it over on their last possession. Second down and 10 from the 12. Yearby. Hammered at the line of scrimmage. There's Rashad, the weak side linebacker. Boy, this is great fit by your linebacker. Watch shot number 10 get the leverage to the outside. He allows Rashad to come and clean up from the inside. So it's outside leverage by the middle linebacker, Schottmer, and then the knockout punch by Rashad. And run defense for North Carolina, John, near the bottom of the FBS. 218 yards allowed, but so far looking pretty good. Incomplete. Des Lawrence played that perfectly. Fourth down. Boy, the junior out of Charlotte looks spectacular on the corner. Cat-like instincts. We were talking with offensive coordinator James Coley earlier this week, and he said, you know, the North Carolina Tar Heels, they kind of play like the old Miami Dolphins. Sam Madison and Pat Sertain on the corner. They like to press and get in your face. Vogel's punt. Lands near the 45-yard line, rolls close to midfield, and again, good field position for North Carolina. We have a minute and 31 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Tonight on ESPN, a great game for you. Number nine, LSU taking on Arkansas. Must-win situation for LSU, and Arkansas is red hot. The coverage begins at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN, presented by Hilton Hotels. Brandon Allen this season, you can see the last three games has really improved he really has and he's a talent at the quarterback position and they're really doing what they did last year as a team getting hot late and Leonard Fournette needs a bounce back game to stay in that Heisman hunt Williams wants to throw on first down and he's complete caught at the 37 yard line by Davis who's thrown down Davis owns the school reception record and the school touchdown catch record Boy, what a great job by a, a large receiver on the outside at 6'4", 220 pounds. T.J. Logan will run it for about three, four yards. The receiving court has some big men. Davis is 6'4", Buck Howard 6'5", Mack Holland 6'4", and then you throw the water plug mixed, Switzer in there. That's right. Mix him in there. And he usually gets it done in the middle of the football field. He's 5'10". But is Grease Lightning when he gets loose? This might be another quarterback run to get Marquise involved here on second and medium. Hands it off to Logan. Good blocking. First down to the 20-yard line. Jawan Young, the middle linebacker, finally made the tackle. And Carolina back in the red zone after the 13-yard game. And back into this tempo. He'll throw it. Should have been caught. Howard is kicking himself. I don't know if Bug Howard jumped too early or this is just a flat drop. He may have 
got up a little bit too early that thrown him off. But either way, you've got to catch this football. That's why you're six five. And he's got a 40 inch vertical leap. So no excuses for no. Bug Howard. Final seconds here of the opening quarter on second and ten. They flare it out. It's Logan. And a good blocker two downfield and he'll tumble out near the 12 yard line. Quan Johnson will be credited with the tackle and that's going to bring us to the end of quarter number one. North Carolina deep in Miami territory again. They've got a 7 nothing lead and on both sides of the ball John things going well for the blue. They're getting penetration on defense. You get a turnover that gives it to your fifth year senior that finds the end zone and a seven point lead. Chapel Hill, visual symbol of the University of North Carolina. Tar Heels have a 7-0 lead as we start play here in the second quarter. Miami's goal to run the football today not going so well, John. No, it hasn't, and they've been backwards on the ground, and Miami's longest play has been 22 yards. That was on a screen pass early in the first quarter. Elijah Hood in the backfield to the right of Williams. On third down and two, He'll throw. Cox Switzer first down. There's the junior from Charleston, West Virginia. Nice little combination rub route on the outside, and now you have to expect a running game to go downhill. And they do run it with Hood. And look at that. He does not like to be tackled. Looks like a rugby scrum right inside the five yard line. He is finally stopped after three by Kendrick Norton and company. He is six foot, 220 pounds. He squats 605 pounds. <laughs> so those legs are hard to stop. He's a battering ram. He's going to get it again. Well, fake it to him. Shovel pass. Bobbled by Kendrick Singleton. And he hangs on and gets it to the one foot line. Earlier in the year, down here, especially in the red zone, as you take a look at that bobble on that second down opportunity. We'll take another look at it. Just the tenth catch this year for Singleton. was an interesting way to deliver that football. Well, he wanted to get it out to him because he was so wide open and in trying to get to the end zone. Let's see if he actually catches the football. It looked like the elbow went down and the ball may have never broken the plane if they do call this a catch. But it would get North Carolina inside the one yard line. Well, it looks like the ball never hit the ground. Marquise just flips it outside to Singleton. It's, Boy, it looks, it's, it's hard to tell, but it looks like Singleton may have caught the football. That was ruled to catch on the field. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. Rosie Amato is our replay official upstairs. He's taking a look at it. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball carrier was stopped short of the goal line. Third down. So they were actually looking at whether it did cross right. the plane. Not whether it was a catch or not. So we appreciate that explanation from Dwayne Height as to what they were actually looking at. So it'll be third down and goal now for North Carolina inside the one. And you have options when you have a quarterback that's 6'2", 225 pounds. Quarterback sneak, quarterback follow, or you give it to Hood going north and south. And we've seen uh, Miami already bite on that pitch a few times on the keeper by Williams. They snap it, give it to Hood, and he walks in. Touchdown. Twelfth rushing touchdown for Elijah Hood. Nine play 49 yard drive for the Tar Heels. Yes, yes. 
And it's 14 nothing here on senior day. Seth Luttrell trying to confuse Miami. They get up under center quickly. They get to their big man. They get a two touchdown lead. Has been very good today for certain. And the bell cow of that O-line is Landon Turner, the senior right guard, making his final appearance at home in Carolina Blue. His 38th career <laughs> start today. He's a durable, athletic, big man up front that you want to have on your offensive line. And the good thing about Turner is that he's really grown into not only his body, but his position on that offensive line and, and one of the leaders of this Tar Heel team. North Carolina by a couple of touchdowns now. Weidler to kick off. Walton and Elder back deep. Walton will catch this in the end zone and take a knee. And for more on Turner, let's go down to Mark Morgan. Tar Heels offensive guard Landon Turner decided to hold off on the NFL and return for his senior season. Once he made that decision, he also decided that he would bring the offensive and defensive units together so everyone could pull in the same direction. That wasn't happening at the end of last year. Turner told me that he penned the phrase, got your back, which has become a rallying cry for the Tar Heels, and it's become a hashtag that students and fans have all adopted. Everyone's all in. Head coach Larry Fedora said, Turner is having the season I dreamed he would have, but I never would have dreamed he would be this unbelievable as a leader. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I know you're a big Twitter guy. You follow Landon Turner. Oh, absolutely I do. <laughs> hey, I, I've got your back, by the way, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Three-yard pickup for Stacy Coley on that reception as Miami's going to try and claw back now down a couple of scores. And, Clay, I think that's what Miami has to do. They've got playmakers on the outside, and I know that offensive coordinator James Coley wants to run the football, but if it's me, I get Stacy Coley and Herb Waters and, and maybe even a couple of those tight ends, get him involved in the game to try to get some points on this drive. A runner here, Walton. And it's gonna bring a third down again for Miami after the three yard game, it will be third and four. Des Lawrence. With another tackle. And Miami has converted just once. Four tries today on third down. And there's a big tight end in the football game. And David Njoku, 6'4", 244 pounds, near side. This is the guy that you may want to look to on third and medium. Get him going against the linebacker. Kaya tipped incomplete. MJ Stewart defended Coley, and Kaya can't get this offense into a rhythm because they're having a hard time picking up third down. It's the aggressiveness of the Carolina defense on third down. They're going man coverage. They're trying to put a lot of heat on the young quarterback, and they're man to man everywhere on the football field, and there's not a whole lot of windows for Kaya to pick through. Third three and out for the Canes today. And Vogel punting for the fourth time. Switzer again calling for the fair catch. He runs up, fields it at the 33 yard line. And we go to the studio and check in again with Brenda. Play will stay in the ACC for this update. Clemson scored two touchdowns in the first 90 seconds of the ballgame. Syracuse weathered the storm and came back to tie it. But Deshaun Watson to Sharon Peak for four yards. And Clemson is back on top 21 14. Time for a short break. Back to Chapel Hill in a moment. Here in Chapel Hill. Boy, those guys <laughs> scared the life out of you. Got the GoPro going on Ramsey. <laughs> Look where he goes, right for the food. Clay Mantic, John Kajemi, Mark Morgan back here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina leading 14 0. Williams throws incomplete on first down. Hardy burns in the coverage. He was trying to feed it in there to Mac Hollins. There's a marker down. Pass interference. Defense. Number one. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. It's another penalty against Miami. They've got six so far today. Well, penalties have been killing Miami all season long. Here's the matchup on the bottom of the screen. Artie Burns gets called 
for the pass interference, and it might have been first the left hand and then the right arm around the waist of Mac Hollins. No penalties against North Carolina. Designed run. Look at this. Williams into the open field. He might go down to the 10-yard line before he's finally wrestled by Jaquan Johnson. A run of 46 for the senior quarterback. Explosive plays is what he is all about. He can do it with his right arm, but more importantly, he can do it with his legs. And for a big guy, he can pick him up and put him down and gets Carolina to the 10-yard line. There's a flag down there, though, so. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number one mm. for the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And again against that is number Burns. one's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Yeah, he's going to come out of the game. You can see he was trying to explain to Larry Scott what happened. He's frustrated. Two penalties against the junior on this series. Yeah, the Miami Hurricanes penalties have been the issue so far, not only this season, but today. It's Logan on the carry. Nothing there. Yeah, seven penalties against Miami. Burns a, a terrific play. Also a track star at Miami. You're right. Not exactly sure what he did. Our, our cameras didn't get it. May look for Williams to, to get on the move here to the wide side of the field. Ball's loose. Williams just scrambling to cover it up and retain possession. Now third down and goal. Slipped out of his hands. I think the quarterback saw what I saw, and I wasn't under any pressure. You, you had the matchup to the field that he wanted, and he was so excited about getting there, he forgot to catch the shotgun snap. North Carolina has been pretty good today so far on third down. Three of five. Third down and goal. 10.33 to go here before halftime. Williams sets to throw. Looking for Hollins at the pylon. Incomplete. Hollins, who walked on two years ago, has really blossomed into a good receiver, but this one, they don't connect. Just ran out of real estate to the wide side of the field. He was clearly, clearly out of bounds before the ball got there with that right foot. So Miami comes up with a negative play against the run, take advantage of a fumble, and now hold North Carolina to a field goal opportunity. Weiler having a good year. He hasn't missed a field goal in over a month. 15 for 17. And he's true on this one from 25 yards. So the heels tack on three, and it's 17 to nothing. Over 10 minutes to go in the second. By Energizer Eco Advanced, the world's first AA battery made with 4% recycled batteries. And True Biotics, a daily probiotic from the nutritional experts at One A Day. Veterans Day was on Wednesday, but ESPN, we're celebrating all week. That's right. Great to see the Canes fans overseas flashing their colors and uh, excited about the last couple of wins for Miami. But they're in a hole here down 17 to nothing. There's Artie Burns. You can understand the emotions he's gone through the last few weeks. He lost his mom at a young age. He was 44 years old here late last month. A couple of penalties against Burns on that last drive. North Carolina settled for three. It's 17 nothing. The last two drives for Miami, they have shown nothing, John. They got to get something going offensively. You and I talked to James Coley this week, and he said the run game was going to be one of the main factors. They haven't been able to establish that so far. Just, in fact, minus three rushing yards today. And you look at the scoreboard at 17 nothing with 10:22 left to go before halftime. So Coach Coley has to find something. And I think it starts with Brad Kaya and, and his selections down the field. He has to get the playmakers involved and use that quick passing game and then try to get one down the field. Four receivers set. Kaya throws to the right side for Coley. Great adjustment to make the catch into North Carolina territory at the 42, but now a flag. And this is likely against Coley for taunting. Terrific catch by Coley. This ball is behind him. He adjusts and tracks it perfectly. And then after the play, he's going to say something to the quarterback, Stewart. Number three of the offense. And another 
another bad decision. I know you want to play with raw emotion, and, and that's what Larry Scott wants to bring to this team, but you cannot make boneheaded decisions and let your emotion take over and cost you yardage. And I think that's exactly what Larry Scott is telling him right now. Coley almost 100 yards receiving per game in ACC play. He is one of their go-to guys. They're going to need him if they have any chance of coming back in this game. Yeah, he's one of those guys you want to get the football to. Now they're back in their own territory on first down. Good run for Mark Walton. Nearly spun away from the coverage. Gets it across midfield to the 49 of North Carolina. Clay, that's one running back. If he gets in the open field, you are not going to catch him. He has a terrific burst, and they want to be able to play off of Yearby and Walton in that running attack. But they need points on this drive. There is no doubt about it. They have to find the end zone. Six rushing touchdowns for Walton this year. That actually leads the team. He'll stay in there on second down and three. And this looks like a good play action down for Miami here, crossing midfield. Straight run. Hit at the line and buried. Nas Jones has been very active for North Carolina on that defensive front. Clay, you mentioned it back last week against the Blue Devils. Played very well. This time he beats the block at the point of attack and is able to scrape his way down the field and find the ball carrier. Now dealing with the crowd here on third and three. First down run, Mark Walton, and boy, did the Canes need that one. Just their second third down conversion today. You could feel the sigh of relief up here from that Miami sidelines. You want to be able to keep your offense on the field, get points out of this drive, and try to establish some rhythm offensively with your quarterback, Brad Kaya. Kaya, who missed the Duke game with a concussion, suffered in that Clemson blowout. Was cleared and played very well last week against Virginia. Trying to lead Miami to their first score. Again, it's Walton. Bounces to the outside. Tripped up at the 40. It's a good tackle by Donnie Miles to strong safety. He leads the, the team in tackles for North Carolina. This will be second down and five. Clay, you're right. Donnie Miles really saved a touchdown, but in doing so, he may have injured Mark Walton on the play. And Yearby, who's also been dinged in this game, comes back in. You're right. Both running backs have been nicked in this football game. A run game for Miami near the bottom of the FBS. we will do a flea flicker here. Kaya has time, throws deep, looking for Waters. Herb Waters bobbles it and can't haul it in. Dominique Green on the coverage prevents a big play. And credit Green for not giving up because it looked like Waters had a step. Little trickeration, a good ball by Kaya. Good explosiveness. Boy, you have, if you're going up to catch that ball with Herb Waters, you think he's going to have it. It's just a good job of fighting through the catch by Green, but that's one the Hurricane standout should have. Another third down now for Miami. Third and five play fake. Kaya comes short, and it's a first down reception for Rashawn Scott, his first catch of the day. Their top receiver finally gets his first touch with seven minutes to go before halftime. And Scott, who came into this football game battling a shoulder injury, makes a heck of a play. He falls down on the route, is able to come up and regain his balance on his knees and make the reception to move the chains. So Miami, who couldn't pick up a third down for the life of them on the last couple of series, two for two on this drive. And they march on at the 33-yard line. Kaya, empty backfield, throws, intercepted! Jeff Schottmer! Looking for a block. Still on his feet. To the 15, and finally rolled at the 14.
What a career he has had. Came from out of nowhere to pick that one off. Well, he read the eyes of the quarterback perfectly and broke on the football, trying to get it to Njawu on an option route, an out route. And then look at the awareness of Jeff Schottmer. He knows he may not be able to get into the end zone, but he doesn't want to get the football stripped from behind either. Protects it inside the 15. He is Gene Chizik's defensive coach on the field. Jeff Schottmer, the former walk on a 60-yard interception return. And here's North Carolina knocking on the door again. They've had great success running the quarterback down here in the red zone. And it is Williams on the keeper. Touchdown, North Carolina. Uh, you called it, partner. And it's all Tar Heels here in Chapel Hill. On senior day, you go to your fifth-year senior who has terrific presence in the red zone when using his legs. And he just carries two Miami defenders for six points. Two Miami turnovers in this football game. North Carolina has capitalized on those turnovers. And it's 24 to nothing. Tar Heels with 6.24 before half. Interception of the year. That's really an amazingly low number considering how late it is in the season and how many passes he's thrown, John, but this cost him. It really did, and credit the anticipation. You're going to try to get in Jauku here on an out route, but watch the middle linebacker in Schottmer. He's going to jump the route, go right in front of the big tight end, and it's his anticipation in his eyes that lead him to the football. Kaya didn't anticipate the linebacker was going to get there that quickly. He thought he could beat him with the throw, but that was a great job inside by Schottmer. And now North Carolina may have another turnover. Did Miami get this kick? Yes, they did. Jaquan Johnson, it appears, was able to cover that one up as they did an onside kick. That took Miami by surprise, and it nearly paid off for North Carolina. Looked like it went off of a North Carolina's foot back into the lap of the Miami special teamer. Now, if you're Miami, this gives you a great field position. Boy, you might think about taking a chance down the field here in man coverage. And give it to Joe Yearby. Find some running room. He's got a first down and more, but there's a marker down. Yearby gets to the 25-yard line. We'll see if this one's coming back. And I think it is, Clay. Holding. Offense. Number 52. 10-yard penalty. First down. So wipe out that 19-yard run for Yearby. That's against Casey McDermott, the left guard. McDermott coming back into the lineup here. He's the guy that's going to get called for the holding penalty on a successful run. Just the right arm gets in and around Tyler Powell, the defensive tackle. Yearby made a nice cut, but it was due to the hole provided by the hold on Casey McDermott. There's Larry Scott, the interim head coach. His team now has committed nine penalties here in the first half. We got to think about coming back to that screen play to Yearby. That was successful early in this football game on first and very long. Kaya wants to throw. Got it to Najoku. And there is the big tight end you were talking about. Dominic Green finally wrestles him down. The great athlete from Cedar Grove, New Jersey. This is the area of Carolina's defense you can attack. It's down the middle of the football field. And with the size and speed Miami has, I'm kind of surprised they haven't been able to get there sooner. 32-yard reception for Njoku, who scored his first career touchdown last week against Virginia. Well, the sky's the limit for that guy. First down and 10. I'll run it. Yearby cut down in the backfield. Good play. Case and Collins He's having a good first half, no game. 
Good anticipation by Collins, who's going to come out of the game on second down, but a good tackle for loss and a positive play for the Tar Heels on first down. Boy, this Miami team has been a disappointment today. Came in with so much passion, so much energy after the two wins. A win today would be their third straight and second over a top 25 team, but they have been disappointing here in the first half so far. Kai has got him deep into North Carolina territory. They need a score. Yearby looking for room, cuts it up. Takes a hard hit at the 15 by Schottmer. And that interception on the last series. Schottmer went to Jesuit College Prep in Dallas, the same high school as the golfer Jordan Spieth. And walked on with this program playing his final home game here today. And so far, it's been a great one. Third down and three. Play fake to the end zone. Coley, the intended receiver. MJ Stewart has been dynamite here in the half so far covering receivers. Play both of these corners, Lawrence and Stewart. They're in your face. They will run with the athletes. Miami has it. just a little bit of a wheel route to the outside. And Kaya puts up a competitive pass, but it's inside. And Stewart just runs with Coley to the pylon and out of bounds. This is what Gene Chizik likes to see opponents settling for three. As Michael Badgley comes on, and unfortunately for Miami, they've settled for three way too many times. That's why he leads the nation with 19 made field goals. This from 32. No! So Miami. Held off the board with 3.50 to go in the half. Deflating for head coach Larry Scott and his special teams. That's a chip shot you think you're going to get on the board. 24-3 with 3.50 to go. And Bagley just hooks it left. And you can tell the disgust on the head coach's face. And Bagley, he's had some good moments this year. Had the overtime game winner against Nebraska. Semi-finalist for the Ray Guy Award, but comes up empty there. North Carolina goes back to work from the 20. Williams throws. Catch made. That's Bug Howard. That's a gain of 12 after the 32. I think Bug Howard can run that cool route all day long. Pardon me, that's uh, oh, Davis sorry. partner. Davis. Now. We're at 84, not 14. And on first down, they'll go to Elijah Hood. And that's going to be a loss of two. Good play there by Tyreek McCord, the converted defensive end, now playing weak side linebacker. Miami needs a turnover. They have to tackle the football, find a way to get into a throwing lane if and when Marquise Williams wants to put it up. Miami's been winning turnover battles this year. Plus 10 coming into the game, but giving up two today. And 14 points as well off those turnovers. Here's TJ Logan. And that's going to be a loss. Deion Bush pushes him out of bounds to stop the clock with 2.55 left here in the second quarter. Two negative plays in a row for this defense on the fifth year senior quarterback. And now at third and long, you have to protect the football with 2.50 left to go before halftime and a big 24 to nothing lead. Marquise Williams. 42 yards through the air, 84 on the ground, two rushing touchdowns. He'll look to throw here on third and 16 to the sideline. That's out of the reach of Howard, and he was undercut. And Tracy Howard, and now there's some more words there. The officials quick to move in. Howard and Corn Elder. There for Miami, they're having their say. Yeah, you got to get Tracy Howard out of there. That's the last thing Miami needs is another 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Well, Bug Howard actually starts it with the way he gets up. Miami comes, Elder comes to his defense. 
really a non-play on the sideline. A little bit of the frustration coming out when you look at the scoreboard at 24 nothing, trying to make a play is the senior corner. North Carolina is going to punt it away. Mangilli comes on to kick. And Braxton Berrios, sophomore from nearby Raleigh, North Carolina, to return. He's going to have to back up to do it. Fields it at the 28, eludes a tackle. And he'll get back to the 32-yard line with 2.15 to go before half as we go to the studio and hear from Brendan. Play coming up at the half. Kevin Carter, Charles Arbuckle join me. We take a look at Clemson being tested a bit by Syracuse. Mississippi State trying to spoil Alabama's SEC hopes. And speaking of spoiler, Iowa State trying to take down Oklahoma State. Upset alert in Ames. Those highlights and more at the half. Back to you. All right, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. You mentioned Clemson, Brendan, and they wrapped up the ACC Atlantic last week with the win over Florida State. Not to diminish what North Carolina has done, John, but they did benefit from avoiding Clemson, Florida State, and Louisville out of the Atlantic this year. You're right, but you've got to play the guys that are on your schedule, and I agree with you. There's Mark Walton. I think that was a one-handed catch, but he's only going to get a yard to show for it as Shaquille Rashad made a nice open field tackle. And that should have been a big play by Mark Walton. There was nobody in the flat for Carolina's defense, and out of nowhere, Rashad comes up with an ankle tackle. Under two minutes to go. Miami has all of its timeouts remaining. So does North Carolina. They give it to Walton. He's hit in the backfield. Somehow got away. And then he has covered up a host of tacklers for the Tar Heels. Led by Rashad. That's going to be a loss of two. Third down and long coming up. Getting back to North Carolina and their schedule this year. They played two FCS opponents. Also lost to South Carolina in the season opener, John, which back in September looked like a forgivable win, not so much anymore. Is that the only reason that they're not higher? I think so. Yes, I think so, because you end up playing two teams in North Carolina a and and Delaware that, quite frankly, isn't on anyone's radar. On third and 12, Kaya steps up, unleashes, but it's incomplete. As Njoku couldn't handle that one, fourth down and... Miami will have to kick it away again. Under a minute to go. Brett Kaya did a great job of eluding pressure in the pocket and throwing a strike outside. And those are the passes that his playmakers have to help him out with. And you can see the frustration on both offensive coordinator and quarterback. Kaya 10 of 19, 146, and an interception. Also mishandled a snap, bad snap. It led to a turnover. And a touchdown for North Carolina. Here's Switzer. He's got six career punt return touchdowns. And he could go. Finds the sideline. Has blockers. Ryan Switzer inside the 10. Touchdown, North Carolina. A 77-yard punt return for Switzer. That ties an NCAA career punt return record. Seven career punt return touchdowns now. That was amazing. That was a great individual effort, but let's credit the other 10 guys who didn't give up. That was a huge void in the middle of the football field, and Switzer found the Miami sideline, and he found his seventh career touchdown. On, on punt returns. Great job by Switzer of backtracking. He fields it cleanly, but there's so much room to run. He just gets to the sideline. He finds the wall, and these guys never give up ahead of him. Makes a great job of getting north and south once he hit the Miami sideline, and then it was a picket fence down the sideline for six. That is a talent doing what he does, and that's going to get him to the next level. The way he can catch the football and the way slot receivers work at the next level, if you can do this on special teams, you're right. You can hang around the next level for a long time. Mark. 
You guys just saw Ryan uh, Switzer show off his skills as a pun returner. Ryan loves Christmas movies, and I mean, he loves them. He watches them year round. In May, June, and July, he's watching Christmas movies. His number one favorite is The Santa Claus, starring Tim Allen. Number two, the classic It's a Wonderful Life. So there you go. Well, he gave the fans here an early Christmas <laughs> present. Did. As everybody was up out of their seat here at Keenan Stadium, that ties an NCAA record, his seventh career punt return touchdown. And that's going to be out of bounds, barely got out before the pylon. And penalty against Nick Wiley. They may be adding 15 on. Oh, yeah, it's getting chippy down to right this now. as well for Miami. I hate to see this, but look like Case and Collins. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 23 of the kicking team. That 15 yard penalty will also be enforced. That is number 23's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Case and Collins with that unsportsmanlike. And the first penalty against North Carolina today. The ball clearly goes out of bounds, so Miami's going to get great field position. And here's where the penalty occurs on the ground. Two guys getting tangled up, and Collins gets the flag. And now Miami's going to tee it up at midfield. Sixty six points for North Carolina against Duke last week and North Carolina well on their way here against Miami today. Miami has all of its timeouts 40 seconds to work with here before the half. Good field position. Trying to get something on the board before the break. That's complete. The 37, Christopher Herndon, the H-back from suburban Atlanta, makes the catch. And Miami's got to hurry up. Play action. Kaya again complete to Herndon. Stumbles, stays on his feet, and falls ahead to the 15. That's a gain of 22, and Miami already... In field goal range, but they're thinking a touchdown before the break. Timeout, Carolina, I believe. Yeah, yeah they got a call. They're first. So Brad Kyle will head over to the sideline. And we've got more college hoops on ESPNU Sunday. That's tomorrow with the season's number one team in last year's. Runners up highlighting our coverage at four the heels will host Fairfield right here in Chapel Hill then at eight 17th ranked Wisconsin battles Siena. Would might need some help against Bo Ryan's crew no doubt about it both games also streaming live on watch ESPN there you see North Carolina in the preseason poll ranked number one. However North Carolina doesn't have their star Marcus Page for the first few weeks he's got a broken hand. However, that didn't affect them no, last night as they not. beat Temple pretty good. They did. It made it look easy. 31-0, North Carolina. They were hoping to clinch the ACC Coastal with a win here tonight. Unfortunately for them, Pitt won the football game against Duke just down the road in Durham today. So Pitt is still alive in the ACC Coastal race. 15 seconds to go before the half. Kaya to the end zone. Had a man to open. Najoku got some separation, but it's incomplete. So North Carolina, if they win two of their final three games, they're going to be the ACC Coastal champs for the first time in program history. They've got Virginia Tech and North Carolina State on the road as their final two games. And Miami, they're going to have to do a lot of coming back in this game to get their fifth win in the last six against North Carolina. Miami's going to have to be in this type of mode. It looks like when they come out to the third quarter, but it's vital to get six points here with 12 left to go before halftime. Pressure coming. Kaya hit hard. Drilled at the 25. Ball is up. And North Carolina 
Did they recover? They Andre did. Smith got it. Kaya was punished, and Andre Smith nailed him. Boy, this is a big shot, and Kaya is trying to buy himself some time. The offensive line just fans to the right side, and a big shot by Smith. It looked like Jones got on the fumble, but this is a huge shot from the right side. A clean shot on Kaya, forcing the ball out, and then the big man crawls on it for North Carolina. Andre Smith delivers a huge blow. Jones scrambles to get on top of that football. The third turnover for the Miami offense today. Smith, a true freshman in Gene Chizik's defense. Recovered by North Carolina. Previous players under review. And make sure that uh, that ball was indeed a fumble. The defense last year, John, for North Carolina struggled across the board. The worst in program history for the Tar Heels. They gave up 39 points per game. Near the bottom of the FBS, they are better in every category, including getting pressure on quarterbacks. And Kaya really absorbed a blow there from Smith. He did. And when he was going to try to push the football down the field, it looks like the ball went from his hand to his side. So it looked like the ball was dislodged from his throwing hand and actually goes against his body and pinned by Andre Smith. And alertly, Jones actually crawls on the football for the recovery. Let's see if we can see the football. It's in his hand there, but it looks like it goes from his hand to his hip. So that ball was dislodged by the hit from Andre Smith. And remember, Brad Kaya coming off a concussion a couple of weeks ago in the Clemson game. He missed the Duke game. And that really rattled his cage. And you wonder how that might affect Kaya going forward. Malik Rozier has started to loosen up for Miami. Of course, they've got halftime just three seconds away, but maybe Rozier will see some action in the After second review, half. You're really on the field, staying. First down, North Carolina. Third turnover for the Canes. Well, between the turnovers and the penalties and what Carolina's been able to do offensively with some of their explosiveness, it's a long road home in the second half for Miami. Down 31 nothing. Elijah Hood. Last play of the first half, and what a half it was for North Carolina. 31 points. Three Miami turnovers. We're going to hear from Larry Fedora at halftime. Now Brendan Charles and Kevin. Thanks very much, Clay. You wear number 56 at North Carolina. You have some big GM. Alongside former Pitt quarterback and all-around good guy, John <laughs> Jimmy. I play Maffick. Great first half for North Carolina, the number 23 team in the land. They lead it 31 to nothing at the break. And the offense looking good, but the defense has really stood out too here today for the Heels. Well, I think defensive coordinator Gene Chizik should be proud of what that defense has done. They've been able to cut the field in half for the offense. And then Marquise Williams has mm -hmm. run the football very effectively in the first half. And that's led to big points and, and big plays down the field for them. A lot of mistakes for Miami. Nine penalties, three turnovers. For more on that, let's go down to Mark. Coach, what did you tell your team specifically about trying to climb out of this 31 nothing hole? Well, we just got to stay together. We can't start to splinter at the seams. We got to stay together. We got to stay united. And we got to come out and approach the second half like it's 0 0. There's one half of football. That's why football is two halves. We got another whole half to come out and just play as hard as we can for as long as we can, stay together, and leave it all out on the field. You and I spoke before the game. You said you want your players to have that raw emotion, that passion, and intensity. But some unsportsmanlike conduct calls a ton of penalties. How do you balance that out? Well, we got to be smart. It's the, it's the ones that like, you know, on sportsman like, they got to be smarter than that. Got to be smarter than that. That has nothing to do with playing with passion and playing with a lot of energy. That's done between the plays. All the extra stuff we got to cut out. We can't do that. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, passion has its limits, I guess. It really does. When it turns into penalties and it turns into frustration, that's when you have to draw the line. Nine penalties for 80 yards, and they've really done a 
a, a poor job of staying on the field offensively. They have to find a way to stay on the field and limit what North Carolina does early in this third quarter. Before the game, North Carolina won the toss, elected to defer to the second half, so they're going to have the football here to boot. Try and keep their foot on the accelerator on the return, and it's a pretty good one for T.J. Logan. Out near the 40-yard line of a junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. In the first half, the mistakes started early for Miami. Mistakes and turnovers. Two fumbles were lost from Miami, and then the big picks uh, in front with the linebacker did a great job in Jeff Schottmer, but then the running of Williams, the fifth-year senior, that was the difference in the first half. He was able to gain 84 yards and two touchdowns. He had a long of 46, and his running, especially in the red zone, was the difference for that offense of North Carolina. And he'll take the snap here on that read. He'll give it to Hood. Look at that guy just churning those big legs. And what should have been a one or two yard game turns into a five yard pickup on first down. Last few games at halftime, they've uh, done well. Dominating opponents. Now Williams, man wide open. Mac Hollins left all alone in the secondary. And that's a gain of 32 yards. One of those chunk yardage plays down the field that North Carolina has been accustomed to making. And it's just a bust, an error down the field. The corner goes inside with the seam route and allows Mac Hollins all alone along the sideline. And now Elijah Hood, running with bad intentions, gets inside the 10. Jermaine Grace makes the tackle, but it's a 17-yard pickup. And look at the yards now. Coming in big, big chunks for North Carolina. And it started with special teams teeing it up around the 40-yard line. Hood again. And he'll barrel down to the five-yard line. Boy, North Carolina can really step on the back of the neck of the Miami team here with a score on the first series of the second half. Completely dominated the first 30 minutes. And now Williams goes to the end zone. And it's incomplete. There is a flag. Yep, looking for the flag was Quinshot Davis, and he got it. It's already Burns. Pass interference. Defense, number one. Ball be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic, first down. Third penalty alone against Burns. Not much you can do when Davis has the leverage on the inside. Burns just trying to wrap his right arm around the right hip and turn the wide receiver in Quinshaw Davis and that's going to draw a flag every time. First down and goal to go from the two for North Carolina. Hood lined up in the backfield. We'll see if they give it to him. Nope, they're going to throw. Williams to the back of the end zone. All alone, Brandon Fritz. Just his eighth catch of the year, but his third touchdown. And this has the makings of a route. Already 37-0. That was way too easy for North Carolina. For a team that came out after halftime wanting to make the score 0-0, according to the head coach, that was very poor on defense. Weiler with the extra point. And North Carolina takes advantage of good field position after the kick return. Five plays, 61 yards, and Fritz with the catch. So good in the red zone is Marquise Williams. He finds a wide open Fritz for six, and it's 38 0. Larry Fedora's Tar Heels leading 38 to nothing as they just walked down the field on their first possession of the second half. And now a Miami team that has really been walking around dejected ever since that Duke loss. Or that Duke, Duke win, I should say. They'll take it here out of the end zone on the return. Out to the 17-yard line. Let's take a look at the remaining unbeatens in college football. 
As the college football rankings are presented by Northwestern Mutual, Clemson, the champions in the ACC Atlantic. We know that they're 9 0. They lead Syracuse right now. Ohio State beat Illinois, but they didn't look particularly great doing it, at least for the lion's share of that game. Iowa, they've got Minnesota tonight. They're unbeaten. Baylor, a big one with Oklahoma tonight. Oklahoma State in the Big 12, also unbeaten. There are a lot of teams having very good years in college football. There's still three weeks remaining, and what can happen? That pass to Coley caught about six yards on that reception. Now, North Carolina came into the weekend ranked number 23 in the country. Eight and one record. And a lot of people wondering, especially in Chapel Hill, why didn't they get a little more respect from the committee? Well, I think it was because of the schedule that they played, quite frankly, to start out the season. You have two FCS teams in your first four games, and I know a lot of people have won, but due to scheduling conflicts and teams backing out of contractual obligations, that's what head coach Larry Fedora, that's the cards he was dealt this season. But he's going to make no mistake in, about it. He's not going to apologize to anybody. I think the best thing North Carolina can do is to continue to win games like this. It's 38-0 against a quality football team in Miami, and it's not even that close. Deep shot, Kaya. Incomplete. Coley was the man he was looking for. MJ Stewart, who had a great first half on the coverage. Now, Miami will have to punt here. But North Carolina getting back to that conversation. They're at Virginia Tech and at North Carolina State. If they can win out, a lot would be on the table in the ACC title game in Charlotte against a ranked Clemson team. Uh, likely a New Year's Six berth, which would be the Chick-fil-A, Peach Bowl, or the Fiesta Bowl. And a lot could happen from now and then in those two weeks if North Carolina continues to win and a team or two ahead of them stumbles. Here's the schedule for North Carolina down the stretch. They don't have a ranked team remaining, but again, Clemson in the ACC title game. Should North Carolina represent the Coastal, and at this point it really looks good, they have to win two of their final regular season games. And this would be one of them. North Carolina has never won an ACC Coastal Division crown. And a win today would be their first nine-game winning streak in 101 seasons. Great job by Damian Washington on the second effort to get the first down. The senior receiver getting his first catch. And that's a gain of 13 yards. Here are the ACC standings. Pitt with a win over Duke today, taking Duke out of contention for the Coastal. Pitt still alive in that race. They're going to need some help, though, as Elijah Hood gets the carry. And Duke hasn't been the same since no. they lost on the eight lateral game to Miami. In and the, and the four overtime game, we had them at Virginia Tech. They, it seemed like they had momentum, and then that, that lateral game really took it out of them. Marquise Williams on the run. He's been very good on his feet today. He's getting close to that 100-yard mark. When this fifth-year senior gets running the football, that's, I think, when this offense is at their best because it gives them options on the perimeter and it allows them to play action and get those receivers behind that second level. Elijah Hood very patient before he starts it upfield. Waited for a block to spring him, and they got it inside the 20. Another big run for Elijah Hood, a gain of 22. Head, head coach Larry Fedora and offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell, they're begging Elijah Hood to say, hey, instead of running over everybody, how about making somebody miss on the perimeter? He did that time. Fritz, another catch, and it's first down goal to go. For North Carolina, gain of 17 for Brandon Fritz. And Miami has just no passion left. We were talking about passion. And Larry Scott has been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, but we're not seeing it now. It has left the building. Williams lowers his shoulder. Touchdown heels. And this is fixing to get ugly.
Six plays, 65 yards in just a minute and 42 seconds. Another touchdown drive for North Carolina. Just a big run off the edge by Eliza Hood, and then the quarterback, Marquise Williams, tucks his ball under his shoulder and carries it into the end zone. Brought to you by Coke Zero. All taste, zero calories. Try a new game day tradition. And Dave and Buster's. Eat, drink, play, watch sports. We've been saluting the veterans all week here on ESPN. Thanks again to all the folks who serve our country and still find time to watch a lot of college football this time of year. They do, and, and you're <laughs> right, Clay. It's, it's been an honor uh, to, to honor them throughout the entire week for us. I want to say thanks to my dad in particular. He's at the VA hospital right now watching some college football and Vietnam vet. Thanks, Dad. 45 0 North Carolina. Embarrassing Miami. It was a couple of weeks ago that the Canes were embarrassed by Clemson 58 to nothing. That led not directly, but it certainly uh, preceded the firing of Al Golden. Now let's look at today's AT&T strong performance and Marquise Williams playing his final home game as the Carolina quarterback having a day. Well, he's been the catalyst on the ground. He's been able to create chunk yardage plays down the field with his legs and especially inside the red zone. His running ability and his strength on the ground carrying defenders into the end zone and then when you have too many eyes in the backfield, he play action you or run you right over from inside the two. So three rushing touchdowns on the evening for Williams. Meanwhile, it's been a disappointing day for the Miami offense. Their goal was to run the football today. They've got eight rushing yards total. Yearby will have a good run here on first down. It's close to the 40-yard line. James Coley said if we could run it 40 times in this football game, we're going to be right there with a chance to win it. Well, they're getting the touches, they're getting the rushes, but they just haven't been able to penetrate this North Carolina run deep today. And you know, the, the cornerbacks and the skill players defensively for North Carolina have been able to match up so well against the speedy Miami wide receivers. Zierby again, Shotmer on the tackle. They've been good throughout this year, North Carolina has, in pass defense. It's mm -hmm. been on the ground. They've had issues. So you thought Miami could come in and maybe utilize the one-two punch with Yearby and Walton, but that just has not materialized through two and a half quarters. Kaya has thrown an interception today. They keep it on the ground with Yearby. He bounces to the outside, hurdles a tackler. And a good run to the 40-yard line of North Carolina, down to the 38, brought down by Tyler Powell. But a run of 16, good to see that Miami's Joe Yearby is still giving it 100%. And that was all Yearby, and that was terrific effort hurdling the defender on the perimeter who looked like he may have had a hand injury or an arm injury. One of those cornerbacks, Des Lawrence. They're looking at him. We'll see how Des Lawrence is doing when we come back. Stepped on by Rashawn Scott. Yeah, Scott was blocking on the perimeter. And as we roll the tape, you can see the right foot on the right hand as Joseph Yearby hurdles Des Lawrence, who was on the ground because of that. And it looked like when he got to the sidelines, precautionary just maybe taping that right hand to get him back in the football game if needed. Mark Walton on the carry for Miami. Look at this. An offensive line pushing Walton and the rest of that pile ahead for an eight-yard pickup. Up second down and short with just over nine minutes to go here in the third quarter. Lawrence is a starter for that North Carolina defense. And with this big lead, how long do you see North Carolina staying with starters, specifically a guy like Marquise Williams? Not long. Uh, you know, 45 nothing. you've got control of the football game. I, I think it's, I've seen enough of them, that's for sure. You don't want guys to get hurt. Situation where you've already got the game locked up. Yearby has the first down. Dominique Green, Bulldogs are down, a three yard pickup. They'll move the chains. Miami, the last five drives an interception, a missed field goal, a punt, a fumble, and another punt. 
It's been that kind of day for the Canes. Yeah, it's been too many turnovers, too many penalties, and not enough execution on both sides of the football. Here's a good run. And a first down for Yearby as he spins to the 11-yard line. It's a run of 18 yards for Joe Yearby. The game's coming up tonight across the networks. Memphis and Houston in the American. LSU trying to bounce back. Baylor, can they keep it going? One of their big tests here down at the end of the season. That one's going to be on ABC at 8 Eastern. And that's going to be a good one. An 8-0 Baylor team facing Oklahoma with only one loss. Game day was in Waco this morning. Great atmosphere there. Kaya fakes the handoff, throws it out for the screen. That is Brady with the catch, and he'll get close to the five-yard line. North Carolina's defensive coordinator, Gene Chizik. He's going to take this personally here. Even though they're up 45-0, he wants this group to preserve the shutout. Mark Walton. Stop short of that first down. They can pick it up near the one-yard line. So third down coming up. There is Chizik. His defense leads the ACC in total defense and scoring defense. He has done wonders in his first year on the job. He really has, and he, he, he's done it with technique and really a, a focus on bringing it every day at practice and harping on the fundamentals of playing good defense. Timeout, Miami. Just ahead of those flags. No, they did not get the timeout call. Larry Scott Full wanted start. it. Offense, number 52, five yard penalty. And didn't get Third the down. attention of the officials. You could see Larry Scott pleading his case on that sideline. He felt like he called the timeout before the penalty was called. Larry Scott was in his third season as tight ends coach when Al Golden was dismissed. Promoted to interim head coach. He was an assistant at South Florida for seven years before coming to Miami. So that's third and seven. Ninth play of the drive. Kaya pumps. Goes over the middle to the back of the end zone. It's caught. Was he in? Yes. Touchdown. Lawrence Cager. The tall, true freshman needed all six foot five of his frame to make that touchdown grab. And Miami's on the board. And credit this offensive line and the courage of Brad Kaya hanging in the pocket to the last possible second. He throws the football up where only his six five target can go up and get the football. There's possession in the left foot down. That looks like that's going to stand as the touchdown. It's a terrific execution by your quarterback and your young wide receiver going up and securing the football and getting the left foot in bounds. Right there, you see the left foot with possession in the back of the end zone. High point of football. That's something young wide receivers at the High school level, college level, NFL level, they all do it well, the good ones. And that time, Cager went up, climbed the ladder for six points. And that was a really good pass by Brad Kaya, who has not had a good day, but gives you a glimpse at, to what he can do very well. He high-pointed that football. The receiver went after it. And it's a touchdown grab. I'm pretty sure he's going to stand. Kaya's got a future in this game that is going to see him playing on Sundays. Well, he has the poise and he has the toughness to be able to play at a high level each and every week. And it's disappointing, I'm sure, when he sits on the sidelines and looks up and sees 45 to, to 6 right now. But he has to keep slinging it in there and keep, keep his offense going because there's two more games to play for UM in this season. After review, really on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. 13th touchdown pass of the year for Brad Kaya. And the first touchdown of his career for Lawrence Cager. Badgley's extra point is good. And it's 45 to 7.
Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. Number 12, Oklahoma. Number 6, Baylor tonight on ABC. Bears have won the last two against the Sooners and three of the last four. We we'll see the offensive comparison tonight. Who do you like in that one? Well, you wonder if Oklahoma can beat Baylor in a shootout because Baylor can score so many points. And Oklahoma, I, I kind of like the home team here. I like Baylor. Numbers are terrific, no doubt. And uh, Baylor, who said they've really got their biggest test here down the stretch. It seems like everybody yes. in the Big 12, it was a backloaded schedule for all the contenders in that league. Yeah, for all the uh, things that happened last year, uh, I think, you know, the schedule really is going to play out in favor of, of one of those teams, whoever can survive that gauntlet. So Miami is on the board for the first time. And... It's going to be a short kick. T.J. Logan is going to field it. He slips at about the 24-yard line and falls down at the 26. As we go to the studio and Brendan. Play. We go to the Big Ten where Indiana started 4-0. They've lost five straight right. games, but the Hoosiers have been competitive against some of the top teams, and that's the case today. This is Mitchell Page going 51 yards on this incredible punt return. And he scores. So on senior day in Bloomington, it's a one-point ball game. Michigan leads Indiana. Back to you. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. That, yeah, there were a lot forth. of folks that thought that that might be a tough game for Michigan today. Marquise Williams still in the game at quarterback for North Carolina. And so is Elijah Hood. He carries ahead for a five-yard game. We'll keep an eye on, on these starters for the Tar Heels. Mitch Trubisky has been seen warming up at times here in the third quarter for North Carolina. He's got his helmet off and right now just watching. It is Hood. Breaks loose to midfield. Still on his feet. Shedding tacklers. Wow. Down to the 35-yard line. Elijah Hood, the sophomore. Out of Charlotte Catholic High School, a gain of 34. And what a compliment he is to Williams on the ground. If they can get two guys going, this offense is so difficult to stop. Hood already with a touchdown in this game. Up over 100 yards rushing now. Out of the pocket, Williams lobs it downfield. Had a man open in Quinshot Davis. There is a flag down in the backfield. Could be roughing the passer. Williams is Thomas. Thomas. Rough the passer. Defense, number nine. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yep. Defensive end, Chad Thomas. I mean, at this point, I know the score is out of hand, but to make your point as a head coach, you got to start taking guys and letting them stand next to you when they make decisions that are well after the whistle. Although that was very minor. Still, you don't need to touch the quarterback when the ball's gone. Look at that. 12 penalties, 103 yards against. And Hood will get a yard. I mean, that's... That's ridiculous to have 103 yards of penalties. They were already last in the ACC, 83 yards per game, their average. And we're not even to the fourth no. quarter yet. That's something that has to turn around. It's one thing for a team to come out and beat you physically or beat you athletically, but you cannot beat yourselves with penalties and turnovers. That's the easiest way to lose football games. Williams dancing in the pocket. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Ooh, good tackle and at the 13-yard line by Dion Bush, the four-year starter in that Miami sec secondary. Marquise Williams, very tough to bring down at that quarterback position. Well, he has great awareness, and he has good feet in the pocket, and he has enough sense to know that when that clock is running out as a quarterback for your passing game, when you run it as well as he does, why not tuck it and let it go? I think that's the thing he tried to get away from early in the season and he's been able to get back to running the football, which makes this a very dangerous offense. 
gives it to Hood, and he is going to be very close to a first down for North Carolina. We're in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Alongside John Congemi, I'm Clay Matvick. A North Carolina win here tonight gets them one win closer to clinching the ACC Coastal Division. They needed to win two of their final three regular season games to make that happen, and they're well on their way here with a win over Miami. As Pitt beat Duke earlier today, the third straight loss for the Blue Devils to eliminate Duke from coastal contention. Pitt's still alive. This North Carolina team right now, John, looks hard to stop. They do, especially when the quarterback gets this running attack going. I'm going to try T.J. Logan here. He dives for the pylon. Athletic move, and he got in. Touchdown, Tar Heels. Clay, you think T.J. was excited to get in the football game? What a burst to the short side of the field, and watch the extension to get himself in the end zone. Wow, what an effort by the junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Third rushing touchdown of the year for Logan. And in three drives here in the second half, North Carolina has three touchdowns. They are not taking their foot off the gas. No, yes. they are not. And here comes Nick Weiler on for another extra point try. And it's 52 to 7. This was quite a dive to the goal line by TJ Logan. Great individual effort. Good job by the offensive line of securing that edge to the short side. And then it was all speed and will that gets TJ Logan into the end zone. North Carolina will wrap up the regular season away from home at Virginia Tech. Never easy to win in Blacksburg. And then they have a rivalry game at North Carolina State. If they can win out and if they can go into that ACC title game, which would be against the Clemson Tigers, would be ranked at that time, obviously. I mean, there is a lot to play for for North Carolina. This could be an historic season for the Targets. It could be a season, no matter what happens from this point on, once they win another football game to get Larry Fedora where he wants to be on not only in the ACC but on the national spotlight yeah. with a team that you kind of feel has a lot of playmakers. I mean they're going to obviously lose their quarterback but you have a good one in the wings and you feel like they're starting to recruit and get athletes in here to compete each and every year in the Coastal. A win tonight will be their ninth and North Carolina hasn't had a nine-win team since 1997 when Mac Brown was in his final year here as head coach. That one's bobbled at the five-yard line and no return. As that was an ugly play for Trayon Gray. 3-11 to go in the third. We go to the studio in Brendan. Play we stay in the ACC and back to Syracuse where walk-on quarterback Zach Mahoney has started two games against LSU and Clemson and he's keeping the orange in this one. Goes in from 12 yards out. It's a seven-point game in the third. All right, Brendan, here are the ACC standings. Of course, Clemson has already wrapped up the Atlantic. North Carolina looking good here. Getting one more win after tonight, supposing this is a win here tonight. Pittsburgh still alive. Duke is the team that has really been a disappointment the last few weeks. That was almost picked off in the secondary by Mike Hughes, the backup corner for North Carolina. Cager, the intended receiver. And Duke was running hot. You and I saw them the last time they got a victory. That's in right. Blacksburg, they beat Virginia Tech in four overtimes. And it appeared that they were the front runner to win this division the coastal but since then it, they've lost three straight yeah they, they couldn't pick it back up you know that was such an emotional victory you felt like that team was destined to kind of get on a hot streak and win out and have a chance to win a lot of football games this year but three in a row and they went in the other direction you with the catch and run not to the 36 yard line that's a play of 29 and he's gimping back to that Miami sideline 
Really like Joe Yearby, the sophomore out of Miami. He's got a bright future here. And that's the thing about Miami, too. They're always going to have good athletes. They just need something to bring it all together. Well, they need to be a more physical football team and not physical in terms of making bad plays. Physical at the point of attack on defense. You know, the line play. I, I think Miami teams, you're always going to have skill. But I think they need to develop a little bit more physical play on the lines. Especially offensively to be able to run the football and get year being Walton going because it makes it so much easier for Kaya to sit back and throw the football off a of play action passing. After the catch by Coley, it's second down and two for the Canes. Kaya had time and then throws it away. Let's go down to Mark. Quarterback Des Lawrence left the game with an apparent injury to his right hand. He sat over behind the uh, North Carolina bench for a few moments, got his right hand wrapped up. Then he walked around with a trainer for a few moments, shaking the trainer's hand, testing his grip. He put his helmet back on, hands still wrapped, standing on the sidelines right now. His return is uncertain. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Batted down. And there's his backup, Mike Hughes. With a nice play on that blitz. Boy, play, that was great reaction by his replacement in Mike Hughes. Kyle's get, wants to give the football, but then pulls it at the last minute because he felt the corner blitz off the short side. And alertly, Hughes gets up in the air when he sees Kaya cock that right arm. Just a terrific athletic play to bat the football down. Nothing to lose. They're going to go for it here on fourth down and two. Complete. First down. Canes caught at the 48 yard line by Lawrence Cager. Larry Scott, who was promoted to the interim job after Golden was fired midway through his fifth season. There were rumblings in the Miami area about. The condition of the program and that 58 nothing loss to Clemson was the final nail. Kaya. And out of the hands of Coley, that would have been a big play. It'll be second down and 10. And now Coley is slow to get up. Coley's battled some injury problems earlier in the season and. That's one guy you don't want to see on the sidelines. He extends for this play. Looks like he lands awkwardly off in his left side with his, his left hand and arm maybe pinned underneath him. Maybe even that left shoulder. And he's had so many shoulder problems over his career. He's up now and trying to shake it off. And the question is in South Florida, who's going to be the next head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. There's a lot of guys names being thrown around right now. <laughs> there are a lot of names and and guys with uh, a lot of pedigree as well. Mario Cristobal the 45 year old former Miami Hurricane player former head coach at FIU. who's currently on staff at Alabama's among. The names you hear most. Associated with that job opening that pass incomplete to Mark Walton. It'll be third down at 10. I've even heard uh, Charlie Strong's name mentioned. Yes. Uh, Butch Davis, Greg Schiano. Has to be a frustrating night for Brad Kaya because he came into this game with high expectations winning two in a row feeling good about your offense getting back on the field last week in a victory. Kaya backpedaling got rid of it to Walton. He's got the first down. Nice move at the 30 still on his feet and down to the 20 yard line. Rashad tackles him from behind but it's a run. Of 28 yards okay. after that catch. 15 yard penalty first down. and a penalty on Shotmer to boot. And so now, great field position here for Miami. 
Just a, another play by a defender that you, why hit the quarterback? The ball's gone. You're two steps away. You don't even have to touch him. And Kaya does a good job of retreating away from the blitzing linebacker to buy himself enough time to throw the football outside in a big play. Just the second penalty against the Tar Heels. First down and goal to go from the 10-yard line. And Walton takes it. Stiff arm. And he's spun out of bounds by Rashad. 41 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Here again is where North Carolina seems to do their best work defensively inside that red zone. They do a great job when they're in the red zone. They try to force three point opportunities and it starts up front. Those big fellas like Jones and Thompson and Bart, they have to be able to get into the backfield and create havoc and negative plays. Longest drive of the game for Miami. This is their 11th play. Kaya dancing, throwing, caught. Down to the two-yard line is Brady. And it'll bring up third down and goal. And again, North Carolina, the only thing they care about is that scoring defense. And so far they've allowed just seven points it's been all carolina tonight 52 to 7 as we go to the fourth here in chapel hill welcome back to chapel hill and the acc on espn we go to the fourth quarter and north carolina on senior night all smiles especially marquise williams the fifth year senior he appears done for the night Miami on the doorstep here, but they're down big. That is Walton trying to pick his way to the end zone, and he I don't is think he held got out. there, Clay. Yeah, he got stopped. So to bring up fourth down and goal to go. Well, this is what I was talking about in the third quarter. I, I, no matter what the score is now, Miami has to develop some toughness up front. They have to be able to run the football on predictable downs, and this is one of them. Kaya trying to sneak it in. There's the signal. He did get in. Touchdown, Canes. Event group, and there aren't many of them here tonight. Yeah, much to cheer about. That's the second touchdown of the night for Miami. Kaya finds a little crease over the pile, and he clearly gets into the end zone. And the Caps a 13 play 94 yard touchdown drive. And Badgley will line up here to kick the extra point. It's now 52 to 14, and we've got 14 26 to play. Back in a moment. Apple Hill in our Taco Bell game track. So we're just underway in the fourth quarter. 52 14, North Carolina. Brad Kaya, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, let alone the ACC. Not have a particularly good game up to this point. Turnovers, penalties, the real story in this game for Miami and North Carolina with a great effort again from their fifth-year senior quarterback, Marquise Williams. Too much running of uh, Williams at quarterback and Hood for the Miami defense to handle. Good return out to the 40-yard line for North Carolina's Mike Hughes. And Williams can take the rest of the night off. Mitch Trubisky, the sophomore from Ohio, comes in. He's played in six games this year. You mentioned earlier, John, the game that he played in against Delaware, and he played very well, probably cementing the point that Larry Fedora was trying to make with Williams. Yes, he made his point because Mitch came in in two and a half quarters and threw for 312 yards and four touchdowns in that football game. And in barely over two quarters of work, he'll hand off on 
first down to Charles Brunson. Brunson, a junior for Winston-Salem. There you see the numbers on Williams. Three rushing touchdowns, a passing touchdown, did not turn the ball over. And you know this was an emotional night for him, John, with his parents here on senior night. Trubisky is going to be sacked. And after 33-yard line, second sack for Miami. It's Jermaine Grace doing the honors. Do you remember your senior night at Pitt? Uh, it was an afternoon. Yeah, and I, I stood watching because I was injured. So uh, wasn't as happy as, as Marquise. But uh, it, it was a victory, so the team celebrated, and I celebrated along with him. But what a night for Marquise Williams, both throwing it and running the football. Especially the last couple of weeks. Less than three quarters last week, he had 524 yards of total offense. Big numbers here again today, and doesn't even have to play in the fourth. Trubisky keeps it. Gets to midfield. Stutter step ahead to the 45 of Miami. This is one of the better backup quarterbacks in the ACC. Made it look easy on third and 14. We saw the mobility of the fifth year senior. Now you get to see the sophomore from Mental Ohio. Terrific block out on the perimeter that allows him to go and move the chains. That's a 20 yard run for Trubisky. And it's Brunson again. A couple of yards. This was pregame. Marquise with his folks. 26 seniors had their parents here tonight as they're honored in their final home game. And just think, you know, if it weren't for those three interceptions against South Carolina in week one where this team might be sitting right now. Three red zone turnovers, but how much better he played from that point on and it really has affected everything for North Carolina this season Yeah, it really has I mean he's been the catalyst on offense and it seemed like it was week four that turned the season around for the offense And by as a result for the entire football team There's Landon Turner another senior His final home game tonight talked about how he has become such a great leader the most consistent member of that O-line this year after that completion by Trubisky third down and four that one's caught by Washington Amy in Washington down to the 28 yard line and this was Turner with his family prior to the game pretty cool the way they've celebrate their seniors here in Chapel Hill with the jersey and a lot of emotion. You, you can tell the guys really appreciate what this athletic department does for each and every player. Brunson. This will be the seventh win at home for North Carolina. Seven and zero. Oh. And there's another injury timeout. Another Canes player is down on the field. We'll step aside, 10.48 to go. And enjoying themselves here today, 52-14, midway through the fourth, all North Carolina. Cortell Jenkins, the injured defensive tackle for Miami, was able to walk off the field. Looks like he's going to be okay. Second down and eight, Trubisky is going to keep it himself. The quarterback runs ahead for maybe a yard. Third down and seven coming up when we come back after hearing from Brendan. Play up next on ESPNU, Texas A&M hosts Western Carolina. Some news for the Aggies. Wide receivers Josh Reynolds and Speedy Noyle have been suspended for tonight's game for a violation of team rules. The rest of the Aggies will try for their 20th straight non-conference win. Back to you. All right, Brendan, thank you. 10-12 to go here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina hasn't gone 7-0 at home since 1980. They haven't won nine games in a row since 1914. Wow. So some long-awaited streaks are going to be realized here tonight for North Carolina. That's a catch. Fialto the catch. Right around that first down marker. It's going to depend on the spot here. Jordan Fialto. 
Getting some playing time here in the fourth quarter. They're going to give it to him. First down, North Carolina. Been impressed with the few footballs that Trubisky's thrown. He has a good right arm. He's athletic. He looks like he can run the football. It might be a nice fit coming in behind the fifth year senior. Trubisky has been a starter. Top recruit out of Ohio three years ago. Turned down the Buckeyes to come to Chapel Hill. He'll be a junior next year. Play fake. Throws a laser to Fialto. Inside the five. First down goal to go. You can see why head coach Larry Fedora likes his backup quarterback. Well, he plants that back foot and that ball's gone. It comes out of his hand quickly and on target. And just continue to lay it on Miami here. This offense, even with the backups in, can't be stopped. Trubisky pitches it out. Brunson, touchdown, North Carolina. Sixty six points last week fifty nine this week and we still have eight minutes and change to go here in the fourth quarter Brunson the touchdown this time for the heels. Ash card and angry orchard hard cider explore the orchard. Doing push-ups for every point scored. How Guys many is that, Clay? 59? 59, 14. North Carolina breaking a record for most points in consecutive games. 125. That's a team record, Joe. Team record, 125 points. 4, oh, I think he threw it a couple he extra did. there for good measure. He did. 59 push-ups out there for that kid. It's pretty good. I don't know if they've done 59 this year. Barrios to the 20 for Miami. And at number 23, Kaysen Collins is hurt for North Carolina. This is what you fear now in a game that you want to get as many yeah. starters out of this football game. Both sides, you know, really. You know, just, I everybody. was just going to say, it's not just North Carolina, it's Miami as well. Collins had that unsportsmanlike penalty earlier in this game. Now he's down here with 8.26 to go in the fourth quarter. Miami, they're going to host Georgia Tech, then they're at Pitt, then a bowl game. Last year they lost to South Carolina in the Independence Bowl a few weeks ago, John. If, if you'd have asked anybody, especially the Miami fans, who were really hurting after that Clemson loss. You know, if this team still had it in them to even make the postseason. Right. Well, they've won a couple of games in back-to-back -back weeks. This isn't going well here in Chapel Hill, but, you know, Georgia Tech, you'd think that's a winnable game. And at Pitt, who knows? You know, you look back at this schedule, and it was the Florida State game that I thought that was kind of the backbreaker for Miami because they played Florida State in Tallahassee really well with a chance to go down and win mm -hmm. the football game and they didn't get it done. They haven't gotten it done Time against out. Florida State North over Carolina. the past five or six seasons. And North Carolina calls a timeout and really that probably more than anything is what led to Al Golden's firing. Never did beat Florida State. We'll talk more about that when we come back with 826 to go. Across ABC and the ESPN networks, you're going to want to watch that ESPN app to make sure you stay on top of them all. We do. Yes. Visit watchespn.com to get it.
Larry Fedora called timeout just to get his seniors out. I, I thought that nice. was a classy move. It is. It's Miami fans have had a down look on their face since the first quarter. Here's Kaya to pass on first down. Crossing route incomplete intended for Cager. I don't know that there's much. Yeah, well, hang on here. There's a flag roughing the passer. It's against North Carolina, obviously, and that's the third penalty against the Tar Heels today. Walton makes the catch first down out to the 48 that penalty was on Tyler Powell the defensive tackle for North Carolina by the way. Well, like the talking. explosion of, of Walton Matt uh, Clay when he gets out of the backfield and catches the football. I really like the way he looks in space. Nearly intercepted by Hughes. We were talking earlier, John, about Larry Scott as the interim head coach and who might take the job on full time. Here are some of the names that have been circulating this week. According to Brett Murphy, Brett McMurphy, excuse me, uh, from ESPN. Two former players at the top of that list that played at the U. It'll be interesting to see who's available at that time because a lot of guys are starting to talk about Chuck Pagano's adding his name to that list as well. Another one almost intercepted that time. Green got a hand on it. Now you uh, live down in Miami, so you have your ear to the ground probably better than most folks. Uh, what do you? Who do you think is? the leading candidate who do you think is most likely to get that job well I think it's easy for the fans in South Florida to say hey we want Butch Davis back because it's a recognizable name it's a guy that's won there but I, I just don't think it's realistic I would think Mario Cristobal and Rob Chazinski Greg Schiano and Chuck Pagano two guys that have coached at Miami and Charlie Strong is kind of like the wild card uh, because he's gone through a couple ADs a couple presidents at Texas hasn't yeah. gone real well there He's had great success recruiting in South Florida when he was at Louisville. 25 plus players he got, and good players. You know, you talk about Teddy Bridgewater. He's a, a lot of guys that could play college football anywhere in the country and stay at home. He got them to go to Louisville. You could say the same thing about Greg Schiano at Rutgers. He took 25 plus South Florida players and made a name for Rutgers with those athletes. Kaya complete. And got it to Herndon. And that's going to be a first down for the Canes when we come back. Let's hear from Brenda. Play coming up next on ESPNU. It's Texas A&M and Kyler Murray, who threw three interceptions in the loss to Auburn last week. Looking to bounce back. They'll take on Western Carolina in about 20 minutes. Back to you. Yeah, Greg Schiano, John, he, he was rumored to be uh, up for that Miami job back in about 2007. When it was open for a while. And I think the North Carolina fans would find the Butch Davis rumors kind of humorous. It's interesting to see uh, how that's going to play out. It'll be interesting to see how Miami finishes out the season. You know, after being on a little bit of a roller coaster ride, you lose your head coach, you come back, you, you win two in a row, and then you come into Chapel Hill and they put 59 on the board. Here comes the pressure. Kaya gets rid of it to Walton. And he's got the first down. Six minutes to go. Simmons makes the tackle. Cristobal currently an O-line coach at Alabama. He's got a lot of ties to the Hurricanes. Of course, played there, was played. on staff there. Yeah, and, and the second time around, he was there for only a month and then took the job at Alabama.
Kaya chased incomplete. Malcolm Lewis, the intended receiver. I wasn't sure coming into this game, Clay, if North Carolina was going to be as stout as they were defensively, but they proved to everyone up front they did a great job of getting after Kaya, the quarterback, and, and limiting the yards on the ground. That's what Miami wanted to do. They wanted to establish the ground game, and it never got going. Yeah, just 83 on the ground. They run it here. Gray gets to the outside, turns it up. He's got a first down as he spins to the five. Still on his feet, down to the one. Great run by Trayon Gray, the product of Carroll City High School in Miami. So first down goal to go for the Hurricanes with just over five minutes to play. Nice individual effort by Gray, the sophomore out of Carroll City High School. See if he can get into the end zone here with about five minutes left to go in this football game. And he does. Touchdown, Miami. Trayon Gray with the touchdown run from a yard out. Good to see young players like Trayon Gray with the effort he's giving late in this football game. And now Badgley on for the extra point. They make it 59-21. 5.05 to go. Let's again head to the studio on Brendan. We'll go back to the Big 12, Clay. Ames, Iowa, where Iowa State looking for the upset. But Oklahoma State has come back from big deficits before. They did it in the win against Texas Tech. This is J.W. Walsh to Jeff Carr. Oklahoma State, first lead of the game. Back to you. <laughs> So the Pokes breathing a little easier now. I'm sure their fans are too, but game isn't over yet. And they've known, they know too well what happened in Ames before. That's a crazy place to go oh, play football. Jack Trice Stadium. And it's cold up there yes, this time of year. It gets cold. So the Canes get their third touchdown of the game. This has been an active second half. That's seven touchdowns combined here since halftime. But it's been North Carolina's game since the early stages of the first half, and they are one win closer now to winning the ACC Coastal Division for the first time in program history. They've got two regular season games remaining at Virginia Tech, at North Carolina State. A win in either one of those, and they'll wrap up the division. And that's what they're looking to do. That On the road, both will be difficult tasks, but I think the way this team is playing and the way they've strung together victories they have a lot of confidence about themselves. There's Ryan Switzer. And he's just going to take a knee at the 12-yard line. Remember, he had that punt return touchdown earlier in this game, which brings him one closer to an NCAA record. We made a mistake earlier in the game. We said it tied. He's actually still one shy of Wes Welker and Antonio Perkins. Went eight punt return touchdowns in the early 2000s. College football rankings brought to us by Northwestern Mutual. Clemson number one, Alabama number two. Ohio State winning today, they're number three. Notre Dame number four. That might have been the surprise as they snuck in ahead of some unbeatens. Notre Dame, of course, losing to Clemson already this season. All the seniors are out there right now. Larry Fedora putting nothing but veterans out there. The senior class. And he calls timeout so they can get this standing ovation. kind of nice it is it's classy move by head coach Larry Fedora get some of those guys with a lot of experience and some that are seniors that have paid their dues in other ways Larry Fedora came to Chapel Hill from Southern Miss and he had success and 
He is taking this program to new heights as Romar Morris gets the carry here. UNC has not had a nine win team since 1997 when Mac Brown was here. So this would be their ninth win, their ninth straight. They haven't had a nine game winning streak in 101 years. And you know what's amazing? That opener against South Carolina here, three turnovers in the red zone. By your fifth year senior, you may be yep. undefeated right now. I'm sure that's haunted Williams throughout the year, but he has persevered through out his senior campaign. Trubisky the play fake the throw and it's Fialto with the catch and the big run afterwards to midfield on his feet to the 40 yard line and Mitch Trubisky continues to show what the quarterback position will look like next year for North Carolina. I think they've got him pretty good hands here with Trubisky. I would have to agree with you Clay. This is a guy that can really throw the football and he's, he's got a a confidence about him. I, just watching him play the position in the few plays he's been out there, he looks like he's been playing all night. Six three, two hundred twenty pounds, and a mentor, Ohio. We've seen him run a little bit too. Very athletic. Hands off, Morris. And he picks up nine yards and gets out of bounds. Step aside for another update in the studio with Brendan. Hey Clay, just a reminder of what's coming up next. It's Texas A&M taking on Western Carolina. The Aggies have lost three of their last four games. They'll look to bounce back at home against the Catamounts coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Okay, thank you. Just over three minutes to go. The seniors are out of this game. Marquise Williams among them. 100 yards passing, over 100 yards rushing, and three rushing touchdowns for the fifth year senior. As Romar Morris gets the carry. North Carolina number 23 this week. You think that it might go up a few, but the thing is, there's so many teams in front of them, John. That would have to lose. I mean, it would have to fall exactly right. Of course, North Carolina would have to win out, including beating Clemson in the ACC title game, for them to have any kind of shot at getting into that playoff picture. I guess it could happen, though. You'd have to take a look, Clay, first at the one loss and maybe the two loss teams, because those are the guys that are going to drop immediately. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the ways North Carolina can climb that ladder closer to the top 10. If they run the table, including beating Clemson, as the flag is down for illegal motion. Ball start. Offense, number 76, five-yard penalty, first down. A New Year's Six berth, which for the ACC tie-ins this year is the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl or the Fiesta Bowl. That would be more likely yes. for North Carolina. And, and right now, I, I think with head coach Larry Fedora, he's concentrating on is how they play. And all that stuff is going to take care of itself. And I know that sounds like a lot of coach talk, but it's true. They have no control over what happens. They didn't when they weren't talked about early in the year when they were putting this string of victories together. And now they just need to keep winning and things will take care of themselves. Trubisky on that fly sweep. Francis on that play and another penalty fly. It's going to be hard to win two games on the road, though. It, it hasn't been a great year. Frank Beamer and the Hokies have had a tough one. Of course, it's going to be the last year for Frank Beamer. They they, they want to give his coach, their coach, uh, That'll a, be a good going game. away. You bet it will. So it's going to be hard to go to Blacksburg and win. And at North Carolina State, that's a rivalry game. So nothing's guaranteed for the Tar Heels. With a quarterback that can change a game just like Marquise can. Kobe Brissett is a very Pretty good, good threat quarterback. The run for Francis, junior from Durham. And that's going to bring us under a minute in regulation. Not a lot of fans left in this 
stadium, the ones that were here earlier, and it was a pretty much capacity crowd, were thrilled early as this one got out of hand. North Carolina is going to win its ninth straight game. And they're a nine-win team for the first time since 1997. Great last game for the senior class. And they are one win away from wrapping up the ACC Coastal title. They'll have two regular season games to get it done. Seven and zero at home for the first time since 1980. An undefeated home slate. Now they'll try and bring that ACC Coastal home. They got two games on the road. Congratulations to head coach Larry Fedora and his seniors. They put on a show today, putting up 59 points against this Hurricane defense. Good game from start to finish for North Carolina. Coming up next, Western Carolina at Texas A&M. 59-21 the final. Now let's get you back to the studio. Brendan, Charles, and Kevin.